Hi everybody, I am back uh, here today and I had to do some yard work this morning and had to do laundry for my parents and I so that took a little while. Usually it takes me like a few days to finish it up but not that bad. I still had to finish my own clothes in the laundry so anyways I hope everybody's doing great today. Um, so Good news. I think I found a uh, free membership site similar to what Patreon is. However, I'm doing my research right now, trying to figure things out. And the amazing thing is, is that they don't take like monthly fees from the creator. It's very similar to Patreon in a way, but I have to use two sites for it um, for this a Patreon-like page that I want to create. Um, but another thing about it is, is that they don't take a whole lot in transaction fees. It's normally, you know, very, very low unless you're getting, like, huge-ass bulk money, like, say, a million dollars or something like that. That's when they'll start taking off, you know, some little chunks of your money. But in a way... Um, <clears throat> I think that's great to basically have um, because I don't know how to do the invoicing, which is like checkout uh, for prices of memberships or perks in a way. So I'm also thinking about that too. Um, but as of right now, I'm just doing research on this particular platform and it's basically free. It's free up front and you just have to uh, let them take care of your uh, checkout fees and transaction fees and all this type of stuff. And they do take, you know, my um, my account. Uh, so that's a great thing. So I, I started looking at it. I thought, you know, this could probably work out for me a whole lot more than these other sites because I looked at, you know, another site that basically had... Um, five dollars but they don't have the online store and i was just like uh what that consists of is like memberships and all that type of stuff that which is something i really want to do but <clears throat> another thing is is that i get to have all my social media channels as is and all i have to do is put these link this particular platform link on my social media channels and maybe uh you'll be willing to, you know, contribute in, you know, some way, shape, or form. Or if you can't, then, you know, just subscribe or, you know, watch my channel, whatever. But in a way, um, it really helps me out because, like I keep on saying before, like over and over again, like there's no film industry here, there's no infrastructure, and no resources, nobody is willing to help me out. I have no, like, uh, family or friends who, like, basically understand what I'm doing. And as of right now, everybody is, I wouldn't exactly say they're financially suffering. It's just that they have prior obligations, just like everybody else, including you. You got to take care of your family. Um, it's just that, <clears throat> not only that, but, you know, um, they just have babies and grandbabies, so that's really, really expensive to, you know, take care of a newborn baby. So I really do understand. Like, I'm not, like... And another thing is, is that they live long distance and, um, you know, they're really busy with their own jobs and taking care of their kids and stuff like that. There's some, you know, relatives that I haven't seen in, like... uh a few years or even a decade, so it's been a long time, but it's just a little bit weird to say, hey, can you help me out, whatever, like, it's just how it is, and here's the thing, I'm not mad if, um, they can't contribute, whatever, um, I mean, if they can contribute a couple dollars, then I'll be grateful, but at the same time, like, as of right now, I kind of don't want to ask them for anything because, you know, work and babies and, you know, that type of stuff. But if they're willing to kick in some money, hey, I'll be grateful. But 
like I said before, I don't want to be like, um, calling him and saying, hey, haven't seen you in a long time, and da 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 da, and yeah, feels kind of awkward. Can you please help me out? And all that type of stuff. So it just, it just feels weird, to be honest. But, um, and another thing is that, <clears throat> like, I do go to doctor's appointments with my parents, uh, who are disabled, and I do take care of them. Um, basically the primary caretaker, um, unfortunately my, uh, my sister, um, she can't really help me out because, you know, she has a full-time job and that's really it. And as of right now, I'm trying to think of what type of price perks I'd be willing to do, but it just looks really neat. And this, uh, article was actually created back in 2022. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, um... Another thing about this website is, is that it's very small. And that's the problem that I'm starting to see a whole lot more because it just feels like the more popular websites get more control of, like, the media, uh, like, output articles. And with these smaller websites that are basically um, free or, like, cheaper to have... Um, but at the same time, it's getting really hard because there's some, you know, sites that are like uh, costly per month and per year. And unfortunately, you can't pay like per month. And I'm not paying someone like uh, $25 a month when uh, on their computer, it's like $20 a month. But you had to buy the whole entire year. And I was just like, oh, no, I don't think that's going to happen. So. I really have been, um, just looking at it, doing research, and I thought to myself, you know, I've seen, like, um, people use it to gather data, um, from, and it's basically for the internet, in a way. It's not like it's, um... Like, very costly. It's very free, because both these websites do support it. It's mostly, like, Google in a way, but, um, you have to set it on your own social media accounts to do it. And then you have to set up this certain, like, uh, add-on in a way. It's not an actual, like, sales ad, but it's, like, an add-on to your particular site. Like, a search engine in a way. But I just said to myself, you know, this looks pretty interesting. You know, why not, you know, just do that? So, uh, in a way, um, I was thinking of doing that. But as of right now, nothing is, like, actually concrete. I don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, uh, after everything is put together. But hopefully it works out, you know. Um, I also had to, you know look at some stuff too, other stuff, but I'm not going to be putting a whole lot of like expensive cash perks. I mean, um, membership perks in a way because, you know, of our economy in a way, because that's what I was thinking of doing. Cause I've seen a whole lot of people, actually do that too so I was just thinking of doing that so um yeah people can and another thing is that people can actually pay me per day or they could support me per week or per month or yearly so which is pretty you know honestly really really good but there's different like differences and no not differences but selections that you can quite possibly do in order to, you know, help out. But, you know, um, that's all I can really say as of right now. But, uh, it's not up and running yet. I'm still looking at some stuff. If people do want to contribute, they can. If they can't, then I really do understand. But, you know, 
I'm not like curating movies that are like uh couples of millions of dollars. I just can't afford that and you know it's gonna take a long ass time. Like I don't wanna do that. So <clears throat> um but yeah. And um I don't want people to feel bad or whatever, but it's really your choice. And there's no, like, expiration date similar to, like, other crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, it's basically similar to Patreon. There's no, uh, like, service end date, expiration date. There's no, like, also, I don't have to give them a whole lot of my revenue, which was 8%, uh, according to them. Um, no, that was for one their seller memberships, but I was just having problems because the the bank information that they were asking for was just like the only problem is, is that they wanted a bank uh that basically caused fraud to my parents' credit card three times. And I didn't want to do that because I'm not going to go through that and just say, you know, oh yeah, something happened and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, I was just looking for a very reliable, uh, website in a way, because this isn't to say that Patreon is a, you know, stupid website. I understand that they had to lay off, you know, some people, some of their workers due to the, you know, pandemic, but, you know, it's just like... Their security is, like, the biggest thing as of right now. And one of the websites is actually much bigger than Patreon. But nothing is perfect. I understand, you know, layoffs ha tend to happen. And, you know, I'm not worried at all. But, you know, this website is incredibly small. I don't know how long they've been in service. So that's what I'm trying to figure out, you know. But this is a smaller website, and they don't ask for monthly fees or yearly fee fees for, you know, sellers like me. So, in a way, that really does help me out. But, you know, you just, like, never know. Um, you know, according to their website, because they're so small, like, there's so many websites they're just, like, asking for all these specific fees and perks and all that type of stuff. Like, how am I supposed to, you know, uh, use your website and you're, like, asking me for, like, $200 per month? There's not even a whole lot of people that can actually use that. Like, if you're a beginner, that's the thing. And that's why I was trying to find is a reasonable website membership website in order to create something, especially for a beginner like me. So that's the problem that I was having for so many years because, you know, I've definitely, you know, did try, but like, I couldn't find anything. Like people were just using crowdfunding all the time. They weren't like s suggesting like other crowdfunding platforms. And I was trying to think like off the top of my head, you know, about what you can do, but in a way, like, people are selling stuff on their websites, but at the same time, they're already established, and I'm trying to, you know, seek people who have actually done something from literally the ground up, and that's why it's becoming so much harder for filmmakers, musicians, or any type of artist, or, like, any type of, you know, small business company and that's the reason why, you know, it's just becoming so much harder to, you know, um, breach through, you know, uh, your obstacles. Like, that's why, you know, my company, Gate Crushers Pictures, really uh, emphasizes because that's what I can relate to because I'm trying so hard, but, you know, um, it definitely is a trying time for everybody, and I certainly understand that, but nothing is, you know, perfect at all with any type of website, any type of social media platform. 
I'm just saying that, you know, if you really want to, you know, get into your specific career that you have always dreamed about doing, then you have to find out a certain way to do it. Like, for many years, and I have to say this to be honest, because I am not that type of person that, you know, asks for money from anybody. I've always been like, you know, using my own money, but it's just really, really hard. Because uh, making movies is very, very expensive. Especially since, you know, it requires, um, well, noticeable actors in a way. It could be like um, people who are non-union and unionized. But there's also other legal requirements that you definitely do need. And it could be really costly. And... You have to, you know, pay for editing, you have to pay for production, you have to pay for costumes or whatever the fuck that you need to create. And not only that, it's also very expensive to create, you know, pra practical effects like uh, squibs to create gunfire, um, makeup effects, um, like to create a monster, whatever you want to do. Um, CGI is also you know, very expensive, not that I'm going to use it all the time, but only when it's definitely necessary, but it's, it's just really difficult, and since the pandemic started, I started, you know, thinking about it, and I did try a suit and spark campaign, but it didn't work out, because my bank was closing down during the times of COVID, and then all of a sudden, I... I've also had problems with my bank, too, because they keep taking money out, you know, for their monthly fees, and it's just ridiculous. And they ask for a whole lot. And I am currently not working. I did have a prior job, but unfortunately I was let go um, from COVID. And I had to, uh, well, I was furloughed, and then I had to resign to a due to a um, car accident, and that really lets me out with a trans transportation vehicle, so I couldn't really go to work anymore. So, I've been struggling really, really hard, not only to create my social media pages, which is something that I still don't get paid for, because um, not that I'm saying that I want to become super successful or have millions of subscribers, no. Um, but I'm very grateful for the people either watching or not subscribing, uh, viewing my stuff, whatever, whatever you want to do. But using social media is not something I want to do because I'm a very private person. I keep my own personal stuff, you know, to myself. But over time, it just, you know, got to the point where I just couldn't even afford it and uh, right after the pandemic, that's when both my parents went to the hospital and they were going through a very bad medical crisis. The both of them, like my dad ended up getting his foot amputated due to a serious skin infection. And my mom also had uh, a blood infection and now she's having like constant infections and her bladder, and all this other shit, and, you know, it's just very, very tiring, so, um, yeah, I just feel like I have no help, and you're probably thinking, well, you could just contact your, your family and friends, and whatever else, but that's the problem, is, is that they're constantly busy, and I don't really talk to them all the time, only through, like, um, Facebook, but, um, that's really it. It's just that they also have jobs and, you know, they just recently had, you know, either kids or grandkids, babies, all that type of stuff. And you're probably thinking, well, what about friends or whatever? Um, I used to have a few of my friends, but they moved away. I don't know what happened to the other friend that I used to have. I mean, she hasn't con contacted me back. I don't know what happened to her. Um, maybe she's going through a very rough time and she doesn't want to, you know, uh, talk about it or try to message me. I mean, sometimes um, 
every once in a while she would back in the past she would lose my um phone number so maybe that could be another reason why so yeah unfortunately i've i i've just been you know trying very 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 hard uh to you know figure stuff out on my own and it's just been you know difficult but i'm not asking for millions of followers or whatever i'm not trying to be like uh overdoing it or look like uh an idiot you know trying to become successful for no apparent reason and it's just really hard to you know make my own movies and short films because i have no help and that's the problem so that's the reason why i created a cameo and a uh, a soon-to-be membership website if I can actually do it, but that's the thing. It just gets, you know, very tiring, and I don't know what to do. But not only that, I'm going to be using some of my own money to pay for stuff, so it's not just you that's going to be, you know, supporting if you can or not, whatever. But I'm going to be using my own money because, you know, I think that would be a great way to you know, also get some money back as well in order to keep making movies, stuff like that, excuse me, <clears throat> indigestion. Um, I just feel stuck. I never had, like, any sort of, like, connections with people on the internet. It's, like, very, very hard. Um, it's not like I'm asking for anybody to, you know, financially support me. I'm just like, you know, um, I'm just learning about how to make movies independently and all that type of stuff. So it's gonna be a really, really hard time to, you know, do that. And in a way I just feel, you know, very stuck and I don't know what to do sometimes. And it's not because I'm confused. It's just that, um, I'm literally in a place where there's, like I said, no infrastructure for a film industry. Like, I tried TV news stations to get in. I tried advertising agencies. I tried everything I can quite possibly think of. I tried contests. I tried, you know, uh, everything. Grants, uh, crowdfunding, uh, campaigns, even though that they didn't work out. But, in a way, your support and contributions could actually uh, help these movies get made. But, I'm also kicking in my own money because I gotta be able to, you know, own the rights to everything. Like, copyright and, you know, to... Well, I already have an established business, in a way. Um, but, yeah. It's very, very costly. So, Yeah. I'm going to be using some of my own money. So, um, it's not going to be a whole lot, um, but it's a start. But, like I said before, I'll think about price perks and all that type of stuff for this particular website. Anyways, moving on. Um, so, something interesting came up. And this one video on YouTube was talking about it, but not in length because they're not so used to the independent, you know, film financing industry in a way. So I wonder how they actually got in the flyer to be made with that controversial actress from Aquaman. So that to me is something that has never been, you know, talked about. Like, how can she actually make that movie and ex executive, you know, produce it? I know she's actually done it. And she didn't actually do it for the war, like I said in my previous video. So, just a little update. She did uh, Syrup, uh, which is, you know, executive produced by her. And she also did uh, In Sue in the Dark. The Dark Knight, she was a co-executive producer. So, she does have a prior, like, IMD page, IMDB uh, page about it, but 
another thing is that I looked at it and her name wasn't even on there, like whatsoever. So the guy in this video actually found a movie clip or of the end titles with her name saying that she was a, an executive producer. So since, you know, the constant court battle with, you know, Johnny Depp and the a guilty verdict fallout in a way. Not even before, but certainly right after. Because she filmed in the fire right before, you know, the court case in Virginia. So, how could she have made that movie with only her as the star and the guy that she was co-starring with is a Spanish actor. And um, he isn't quite, like, you know, a huge star. He's somewhat of a marketable actor. He's from The Last Stand and uh, a Jerry Jones, like, Western movie. But he isn't, like, prolific for American movies, but it's usually for independent movies. So this guy, this video um, narrator guy, was basically saying, how could she get the money for this particular movie? Because she isn't registered on IMDb, the IMDb uh, page for In the Fire, which is pretty odd because they, they basically announce, you know, well, they basically have all the names under the title of producer or executive producer. So it seems like um, I mean, it's just really, really odd to me. I don't know what happened if other people fell out of the movie because of her controversy, but there were some producers that were actually, um, producing the Ferrari movie, and they were also talking about a little bit of Amber Heard situation and all that type of stuff in regards to the Johnny Depp trial. Well, I really do believe that they must have lost a whole lot of money to put her in that movie. And uh, due to the guilty verdict, in a way. Because uh, there's already fallout with, you know, Danny Masterson. Who's already convicted of rape. And he's a Scientologist. But he isn't a film actor. He's from that 70s show. And now Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis is getting you know, controversy about it. And of course, I'm not going to talk about that because, you know, I'm not, like, a fan of their show, whatever. But at the same time, in correlation to uh, Heard, in a way, she, it seems like I wonder if she actually lost, if the producers and executive producers must have fell out with investors trying to regain money in order to, you know, keep her in that particular movie. Because she doesn't have any more movies after, you know, In the Fire and Aquaman 2. And Aquaman 2 is going to come out in December 20th. So, I just don't know what might actually happen with Aquaman 2. And now this controversy with her ex-billionaire boyfriend. So, I wonder if... Like I said in my previous videos, I wonder if there's going to be a legal fallout in regards to that provocative uh, in private photo of basically role play in a way. Um, and that is not something that, you know, uh, businesses, you know, especially corporate ones who are selling like entertainment. Um, and I would have to say Marvel and DC comic movies tend to be family related in a way because a lot of people do take their families there so you never actually know if that could harm uh Aquaman's 2 promotion especially with you know this um photo but um I don't know if she might even you know sue him or whatever but it just seems like this could end up you know, hurting uh, 
Aquaman 2, but as of right now, like, her In the Fire movie is now releasing in Europe due to that film festival premiere that she had, and it's only released in six movie theaters. So, as of right now, it's collecting, like, $185 as of this week weekend. So, um, it's not looking too good. So, I don't know if she put in money for this movie. I have really no idea. But, you know, uh, it's not looking too good if she actually did find some type of funding source or whatever that may be. Uh, probably, like, PR, media, you know, stuff like that. Um, articles, because I think you do get paid for doing that. But it's not looking too good for In the Fire. So, she was also talking about Aquaman too, how that movie could end up losing a ton of money. And, you know, she was being supportive of both movies. So... It's not looking too good for either one of them. But if Aquaman 2 does make money, I wonder if she could be, you know, still making movies. Because, I mean, I just don't know. Because that's the thing. Especially nowadays. Um, I mean, it seems like that she could. Maybe she can. Um... But it's not looking too good. And she's also said that she might direct. So what is she going to direct? What is she going to make? Because, you know, she has no upcoming projects. And if Aquaman 2 ends up failing or whatever happens to it, uh, unless we have some type of, like, COVID um, sickness go around and it's causing hospitalizations and stuff like that, like, like an uptick in infections. I don't know what quite possibly could happen with that one, but it just looks interesting to say the least because COVID is literally the biggest threat of all to basically everybody. Uh, but that's the thing. Like, what she got end up doing after, you know, in the fire and Aquaman 2 because In the Fire is not looking too good for independent movies. But it takes a little while, especially for worldwide releases of independent movies. Like, I was looking at her prior movies. Like, London Fields has actually went up to 500 grand, which isn't, you know, really, really bad. But that was an $8 million budgeted movie. So, they're not going to get much from that particular, you know movies released because it was basically into, you know, state controversy and, you know, court trial. She was also previously sued for $10 million for a breach of contract in regards to those, uh, sex or nudity scenes, whatever. And it seems like, um, but that case ended up, uh, failing in the court system and she ended up promoting, London Fields at a red carpet event um, with media in tow and, you know, stuff like that. So, it seems like, like, and of course, as of right now, the union strikes and all that type of stuff. So, like, how are they going to get that money back? Especially for In the Fire, since it's not really doing really well. Not saying that it's, like, really bad, but... It still hasn't released, you know, worldwide yet because it doesn't come from an actual studio and it's not a franchise movie like Aquaman 2 is. But it just seems like um, her career is going to be, you know, in the drain if she can't make more studio movies because that's how they become marketable for uh, independent movies. So I don't know what quite possibly could happen, but... If Aquaman 2 does make money, it doesn't really matter how much. But if it does continue to, you know, make money, then maybe she can end up being casted in another movie. I mean, I don't know how they're going to end up doing that, but whatever. Um, at the same time, like, I think the reason why is because of the guilty verdict and that puts pressure on a whole lot of investors and 
uh, you know, people who don't want to support her, uh, because she did lie, uh, under oath and according to that specific jury in, um, you know, Virginia, where I live, um, but I don't live where she had that trial with Jep at all. Because I have no idea what actually happened. I was just reading, you know, stuff from the media. And, well, basically certain clips. And I saw certain things. And I think Court TV, TV was have, having, like, a live um, piece going on for, you know, that specific trial uh, with Johnny Depp. Um, but it's really not looking too good for her career. But... Uh, I don't think she's going to get any more roles within the studio system because they're going to end up losing a ton of money because they see her as a controversy figure and they can't put that type of money on, you know, uh, blast with that certain thing. Now, I don't know what could quite possibly happen. She could end up making her own projects, uh, but who's going to release them? That's the only problem that she's going to really, really have because distribution is, you know, really tough for her and especially with other people who've been accused of crimes or whatever. That's the thing. So she could probably self-distribute, whatever. The only problem is, is that she's going to have boycotts and, you know, stuff like that. But I have no particular clue of how this is going to work out for her. But, um... And also, like, my two cents, um, I feel like, you know, in regards to my prior video about financiers investing in movies, it's becoming quite clear that they're not supporting, you know, certain people with certain allegations or verdict trials that they had of, you know, being found guilty. That could really diminish uh, a financial return on of Im investment, so they need to be careful. But at the same time, like, you can't really, you know, do anything about it because, you know, look at R Russell Brand right now. He's being accused of rape, and there's also controversial figures that uh, do have membership websites, and, you know, they say where the fuck they want, and, you know, stuff like that. And they've been accused of, you know, being racist, white, white supremacists, rapists, you know, um, all this other stuff. Um, so it's just not something that a lot of people, especially concerning film financiers, because they don't want that. So she really wants people or she really wants to get movies off the ground. And I'm just saying that as of right now, per that trial, I'm not, you know, like a fan or whatever. I'm not a super fan of, you know, um, of her right now because that is not something, you know, I want to go out and see a movie with her in it. But at the same time, like, it's not really looking too good in regards to that, you know, photo that was taken in private by Elon Musk. So, I wonder what's going to happen with that one. So, <clears throat> and it's not really good for Aquaman 2 because, as of right now, In the Fire is being released overseas. And then it's going to continue to be released in, in other countries because that's just how film distribution works for independent movies and for studio movies as well. So, it just takes a long time because... There's, like, specific dates that they have to do uh, in regards to, you know, say, a, a movie release in the United States. That's where they do it all the time. Uh, I mean, you usually see that for, like, studio movies, and that's when it gets released. And it's not at the same time as, you know, everybody else. So, it's per that, you know, uh, certain country overseas or uh wherever the place uh united states canada south america all that type of stuff so 
like I said, that's the thing. Um, and that's why it gets, you know, incredibly serious about, like, certain court trials and stuff like that. Because now investors, because they were also talking about um, controversial, you know, Me Too figures. And I don't know why they're still giving them money despite having allegations for more than so many decades. And it's just like, that's the thing. What can you do? But if their movies aren't going to make money, then those investors are going to end up, you know, losing a whole lot of money. Because they want to invest in this certain person or filmmaker or actress or who are the fuck, you know, that's the thing. But at the same time, you know, um, if these movies, uh, I mean, if these financiers, you know, don't make their money back, what happens? Like, even for big budget studios, like I was saying yesterday in my previous video, like, could they actually be sued because they lost money? And also, she's an executive producer. So, with this Musk image rolling around, could she, you know, quite possibly sue him for defamation as well, not only for, you know, invasion of privacy, but at the same time, she does have a past of, you know, the verdict, the previous guilty verdict at the Depp trial. So, I don't know what quite possibly could happen because it was released during the times of her, um... Actual in the fire release overseas. Now, I think in the fire releases in October for the United States, um, I think it's October 16th. So, and really, Aquaman 2 is also coming up as well. So, it's not really looking too good for her in a way because if she does end up suing Musk, then not only Musk, but uh, this author guy. Uh, releasing these photos in his book. And she has also stated something in his book as well, but she didn't even actually knew that this photo was being released according to sources in, uh, like, uh, like, entertainment publications on the internet. Like, that's the thing. Like, you definitely have to be careful because, you know, what could quite possibly happen, especially during the time of this relationship and, you know, could it affect, you know, certain countries of where this trial might become, you know, more serious taken because out in Spain, I don't know what their laws is, you know, involving like invasion of privacy or defamation. I don't know how that works or, but that's the thing. She's not she doesn't have an, a U.S. address because she lives in Spain with her, you know, daughter. So, I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to end up suing, you know, Musk and this author in some way for uh, showing this picture, this private photo, without her consent. And I just wonder what could, you know, actually happen. Because he, Musk actually said something about this particular photo and a private, you know, moment together, romantic moment, you know, and that's the thing that you have to be careful about because I don't know what the laws are, you know, especially in Spain and America regarding, you know, um, invasion of privacy, uh, sort of like revenge porn in a way, or like, um, what's another one? I don't know, or that also includes defamation, because I believe uh, her ex-boyfriend lives in Texas, so I don't know how that works. So, um, if it does actually happen, if she ends up suing him, and she could say, well, you know, his allegations damaged my career in regards to that picture for In the Fire and quite potentially the release of Aquaman 2, even though that Warner Brothers, secretly, they don't really give a shit about the movie because they already know it's going to fail because nobody likes her anymore because of what happened uh, with Johnny Depp and, of course, the verdict of that trial. So, 
excuse me, um, that is something that could end up, um, hurting even more, uh, to her career because of what happened. Now, I don't know, but it's certainly not looking too good if she does sue him for defamation. But, at the same time, this was a private photo between the two, so... You never actually know what might happen. She might sue him in, you know, Spain court or even Texas court where he lives because she doesn't live in the United, United States anymore. So I just wonder how that goes. So it's very interesting to say the least because her movie in the fire is not doing really well because um, nobody wants to support her because of the Johnny Depp trial verdict. And, you know, she's trying to save face and, uh, stuff like that. And, you know, it's really not looking too good. So, I wonder if she's going to sue him and this author guy for defamation and invasion of privacy or whatever she's going to do. But it seems like that's what's going to happen. Um, so, it's just not looking too good. Um... But, yeah. But, it's just, like, when you make these movies, and it involves people who are higher up, and they're celebrities, and they don't give a shit about their private life leaking into the press, even though that, that they say, oh yeah, we're private people, but it's just like, that's the thing, uh, where, you know, stuff gets, you know, very constricting and it starts hurting a whole lot of people no matter what and that's the thing that you know I mean I'm, of course I'm not gonna get into it because it's really not my concern I'm just saying it from a film business perspective like they really need to you know have sort of like some type of contract or insurance uh covering them in case this actually does happen but in regards to film financing or even studio shareholders, you know, putting in money for all these big budget movies or independent movies, like, you know, that's, that's what might happen. And that's very, you know, honestly what they should have done years ago. But I don't know why they haven't actually done that, which is very, very, you know, odd in a way. Because it seems like they are covering up some things. And I'm sure that they are. So, that's the thing. But, I also don't like allegations without a police report or some type of, you know, um, I mean, that's the thing. But, uh, people can also fake police reports and other stuff. But, at the same time, like, that is not something I don't actually know of. But, that could quite possibly happen. Because there are, you know, uh, if you look at Jeffrey Epstein and all these other, you know, evil people that get involved in this, you know, discuss, uh, you know, discussing crimes and, you know, stuff like that. That is something that they really do need to figure stuff out because if it ends up hurting a whole lot of companies and they didn't even know about it and they start losing money, then that's go that's going to be a lawsuit for sure. And people are going to start losing money because of that. So, really, um, it's not looking too good. Because it is definitely something that needs to be talked about more often. Because um, I feel like even filmmakers, and you know, sometimes they don't really talk about it either, either because... Um, one of my filmmaker friends was also discussing that, you know, the casting couch culture type of thing and involving your girlfriends or people that you slept with for them to, you know, star in the movie. And he said, like, I couldn't say, you know, shit about it, but that's how you find work. And you got to work with these shady ass people all the time. And that's the problem that I think, you know, these, uh, this t 
type of industry and many other industries are, you know, doing and still doing to this day, despite, you know, Weinstein being out and all that type of stuff. So, really, um, that, if something does come out and these companies didn't fix their, you know, rules, and there's even leaders that also engage in this type of stuff, too. So, I just wonder what it might happen if something does come out, but they didn't enact any type of rules or, you know, stuff like that, like uh, human resources, uh, you know, stuff like that. But the legalities involving that is something that they should, like, call the police for because that's what the police is used for. Instead of just going through human resources, because there's been companies that have been, you know, accused of, you know, sexual harassment through, you know, leaders or other employees and all this other stuff. I mean, that's the thing that really needs to, you know, take into consideration because that is something that can cause a major financial conflict and can cause, you know, people all... Anybody who's investing in something in regards to these studios or independent movies, then they need to be careful. But that's all you really need to, you know, do uh, in order to stop this from happening more often because people are just going to take advantage of each other and it could erupt into something incredibly negative and it could end up, you know... uh, some type of criminal activities, rape, murder, and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, that's the thing that you don't want to get involved with, you know, especially with people who are, you know, currently still doing these, you know, criminal acts. So, that is something that really needs to be taken into consideration. And I just feel like the leadership isn't doing shit. Even politicians engage in this shit, too. Even, you know, um... Uh, other leaders, and that's the thing where it gets really, really dicey and shady and dark, but and just utter corruption because that's just how it goes. They're not gonna fix anything until something actually happens and something you know bursts through. But I don't know how or when, I mean, because I'm not like super involved in these industries because I'm just an independent. But that's the thing. That's the number one concern I feel, I fear the most because I need to protect myself legally in a way when it comes to like contracts and working with, you know, movie stars when I don't actually know their, uh, like background checks in a way. And that's the thing that hasn't been talked about in the film industry whatsoever. That also concerns the music industry because there's also people with, you know, gang of uh, affiliations and stuff like that that they're not even talking about. They're not even discussing. Even with, you know, people who have prior, like, oh yeah, I, you know, pour myself out to, you know, record or music executives, like, from all these female rappers or singers, and it's just like, That's the thing. That's something that has never been discussed. And it could end up erupting in lawsuits. And that's the thing. Especially when people start to lose money. So, it's just really, really sad in my personal opinion. But in a way, this also, excuse me, does concern me because I need to protect myself legally from this type of shit, because I'm not going to get involved with that, and, you know, but when it comes to allegations, there really do, does need a police report, and stuff like that, so, that is something that, um, and whoever signs that police report, no matter if it's a cop, or the person accusing someone of something, of a crime, then, um, Both their names should be considered as, you know, a potential legal source in case if something 
doesn't happen with this particular case. Meaning if it if the person who's lying, including the cop involved, then it could be uh, suing time for people who might be accused of something that they didn't even do. So that's the thing. That's something that needs to be taken into consideration. So that's what I'm just trying to say. Like, that's the thing when it comes to, you know, investments and you're investing in people who've been accused of crimes or even found guilty of something. And, you know, that could cause a legal fallout, especially during a time when a movie is released with that certain actress and now a private photo of her, you know, role playing with her, you know, previous ex is not something that is gonna, you know, uh, is gonna hurt her career. So she hurt Depp and now she's being hurt by her ex. So I just wonder what quite possibly could happen. And also, you know, what about the investors for in the fire? And how did she find that type of money to fund this particular movie, especially since funding can also uh, get lost? I mean, when it comes to, you know, funding independent movies, and that can happen to anybody. It doesn't really matter if you're a big star or even a controversial figure because look at, you know, like, for example, Kevin Spacey. You know, he's trying to get back into his acting career now. So, it just seems like um, that could end up happening. And it's just looking like... Uh, I I just wonder if she's going to end up suing him. And then people are going to, you know, say, Well, you lied about Johnny Depp. So, are you be lying about Musk? And I wonder what that relates to inv Invasion of Privacy and Defamation because her movie just released on Europe. So, but she also divorced Depp right after Alice in Wonderland 2. She also, uh, the dog situation controversy when he was filming Pirates 5, I think, and um, with Disney... And Alice in Wonderland is a Disney movie. And also, Aquaman was when she was, you know, dating her previous ex. So, and also, I don't know when she filmed Aquaman 2, if it was, like, after the trial or uh, before the trial. So, I don't know how that works uh, with those particular movies. And... Stuff like that. She also filmed scenes for Zack Snyder's version of Justice League. So I wonder if um, she filmed all these scenes prior to the trial. Because as of right now, it's not looking too good. And then she's going to cause even more of a bo boycott in a way if there's going to be a potential legal fallout involving, you know, her ex-boyfriend. Showing, you know role play photo in a way. So it's just not looking too good. And of course, um, I don't know what the fun funding for that movie basically, you know, like disappeared because of her, you know, court case prior to the court case, because that's when they started filming the movie. So you do kind of wonder if people didn't want to do that. So I wonder if she put in some money from some type of funding source or whatever, because she's an executive producer, but her file is not being showed up on IMDb page at all. So, which is you know also odd, you know. But you do kind of wonder because producers do find you know money, but they do have to attract talent. And another thing is executive producers also help for, you know, investments and, you know, stuff like that. So it's just, like, very odd to me because if she did end up losing money through whatever, you know, funding source that she had, then she could end up suing uh, her ex for defamation and invasion of privacy without her consent of a, you know, role play photo. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what she's going to do because 
she already settled the Depp case and paid Depp a million dollars already, according to the media. Um, but yeah, and Depp ended up, you know, giving that million dollars to charity. So, um, yeah. I mean, you do wonder if that could quite possibly happen. But since in the fire is going to be released, totally released in the United States by October 16th, you just never actually know what might actually occur. And then, you know, of course, Aquaman 2 doesn't even come out until, uh, until December 20th. So, you never actually know. And that's the thing that that becomes a constant worry for a lot of people who do invest money in, you know, any type of industry or any type of product. And that also includes movies or, you know, studio movies, independent movies. It doesn't really matter because it just, you know, that's the thing, especially when you're dealing with big stars and, you know, uh, their private life mixed in with the public and, you know, stuff like that because they're really well known to people because they are a pro public fi figure in a way because... That's what they are. That's what celebrities do. They crave attention from the public, in a way. But she's not really a private citizen, in a way, anymore. Because she's still an actress. She's still, you know... I mean... I guess... The um, People magazine was saying, Oh yeah, she's gonna pick certain projects that she wants to be in. And she's getting away from Hollywood and, you know, stuff like that. Whatever that might be. So I just wonder what might happen if she were to get into a major like legal battle with um, her ex-boyfriend. But yeah. Um, I mean, that's the thing. Um, but yeah. Anyways, moving on. Um, I do want to uh, talk about an article I was reading about how... Hollywood basically screwed themselves over with this streaming stuff and how people aren't going to be paid due to the union strikes. So, that's quite possibly true. But also, like I was saying before constantly, is that there's some, you know, shady, fishy stuff going on, you know, with these union strikes because they're getting rid of content. And that means that they're not, you know, making, you know, woke, type of inclusion type of content anymore. So they're just going to find people that are not, you know, bitching about, you know, inclusion and stuff like that. And those are the people I really do believe are trying to get the studios to let go of these certain people or individuals who are involved with, you know, that type of inclusion crowd, you know, what people call, you know, PC or woke, but not all of it is, it's just that it's a very serious conversation about, you know, you know, giving more respect for women and minorities and other represented groups. So I can quite possibly understand that, but not everything is woke or PC. I can understand why, but at the same time, like, that's the thing. That's what happened to Barbie. Like, all these, like, conservatives started, like, talking shit about Barbie and all this other stuff, and it's just like... Just not something, you know, um, oh, but, you know, we're doing our freedom of speech, but, oh, yeah, you know, um, yeah, all your faith-based movies that you just released, you don't even fucking support them at all. Like, that's the thing that never gets talked about, you know, on these, like, conservative blogs or TV shows or even news channels, so... Um, but with streaming, you know, it's just not looking too good because, you know, there was a prior actress that basically said she got 27 to $45 per, you know, view and revenue from, you know, SAG. So, I don't know, um, but I don't know why, you know, these people all of a sudden especially these Hollywood stars or other figures, you know, not figures, but artists are like coming out and swinging at Netflix, Apple, and all these other people 
And it's just like, but you signed up with them and you signed contracts and you got money from them. So it's just kind of like very, very odd, very weird because now all of a sudden you talk about revenue. Like I do kind of wonder how much revenue do they pay the top grossing like people like filmmakers and actors? And I bet you that they do. They do pay them. But if you're not going to pay lower tier actors, that's very odd. Like, what are they doing? Like, what are they hiding? You know, that type of stuff. So, in a way, streaming is, you know, fucking everybody over, including the companies. And I wonder why they're putting out so much money for stuff, but yet they can't pay lower tier people. Like, I just... I just don't quite understand it at all because I'm not really an accountant at all. So I just wonder how it works. But that's something that, you know, um, should be talked about because that's something that definitely worries a whole lot of people who are currently struggling and quite possibly picketing. But there's also, you know, something fishy going on with SAG too. Like, why are they getting these popular movie stars to come out and pick it? Like, they weren't very supportive when it came to, you know, other movie stars. Like, I don't under, like, I don't understand it. And then after they pick it for, like, basically a day, their independent movies are basically approved by interim agreements. So, I, I do wonder, like, there's something fishy going on. And of course, I don't have the proof. I'm just stating my personal opinion about it. But that's the thing that really, like, you know, is very shady. Very shady, too. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um, I hope everybody has a great day. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Um, I'm still trying to work on this particular membership website. Hopefully it starts working out. Um... But not everything is going to be 100% completed until I say it is. So, uh, again, um, if you want to support me, go on my Cameo and check me out. Ask me questions, whatever. If you don't, then I appreciate it. Or, you know, subscribe to my channel or uh, view this YouTube video, whatever. Anyways, um, have a great day. Bye.